الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد حبت في الله الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم said الدين النصيحة الدين النصيحة الدين النصيحة قال الإيمان لله ولكتابه ولرسوله ولأئمة المسلمين وعامتهم the Prophet ﷺ said, as is collected in Sahih Muslim, that the religion is sincere advice. And he mentioned that three times. So it shows us the importance of advising one another. And it shows us the importance of having that sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because he mentioned, first and foremost, he said, it is sincerity to Allah or uh, sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this means, Ahabatifillah, as the scholars uh, mentioned, that one is sincere in their worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that one knows Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by his divine names and attributes and actualizes Tawheed, Tawheed al-Ibadah or Tawheed al-Uluhiyah meaning that they worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone and the third category is Ar-Rububiyyah, the Lordship, knowing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Al-Khaliq, He's the creator of the heavens and earth, Ar-Razik, He's the one who provides you with your rizq. So this is Deen and Nasiha, is by practicing that and being sincere and worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And also the Nasiha, the sincerity to His book, to the Quran, by practicing and following the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran. And to his messenger or messengers, alayhim afdal salatu wa salam, and this comes by following the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And to the imams of the Muslims, meaning to the leaders, that the leaders, that we should be, uh, advise them. We should not follow them in their mistakes. We should not uh, defend their mistakes. However, we should not spend our time criticizing and causing the leaders to lose favor in the hearts of the people, even if they've already done that. We don't want to encourage that. We don't want to be a part of that. Because that is the Sabila Mu'mineen, is to avoid that. That is the path of the Salaf al the Minhaj al-Salaf, is to avoid uh, fitna with the leaders, avoid rebelling against the leaders, whether that be rebelling with the tongue or rebelling with the sword. And then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said advice to the general Muslims. And the general Muslims, however that could be considered, although the students of knowledge and so forth, the students of knowledge and perhaps even the scholars are advised similarly that we don't want to take the love that the people have for the ulama away from those ulama, likewise from the talabat al-ilm, because they're the ones in your societies helping to raise up your societies. They are the ones who are trying to rectify the people and rectify the state and affairs of the believers. And they're teaching the believers. They're sacrificing their time and their energy and sometimes their wealth and sometimes even their lives to teach the people Kitab Allah wa Sunnah Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam according to the Minhaj of the Salaf. So that's why it's imperative that we don't belittle them, we don't attack their honor, we don't make riba in the niba, and we're not quick to take them off the Minhaj of the Salaf if they are known for the Minhaj of the Salaf, if their usul, their foundation of how they understand Islam, how they practice Islam, their Minhaj, their methodology is that of the Sabeel al-Mu'mineen, then we should not rush to attack them and belittle them and destroy their character and say they sat with this one or say they did this mistake and try to destroy them for mistakes that they make. Because all of us, as the Prophet said, all the children of Adam make mistakes, they all sin. But the best of those who sin is those who repent. And from our Shaykh Al Muhaddith. Imam Abdul Mahsin al Abad, half of Allah Ta'ala, he mentioned, he said, Woman nas li ahlu sunnah, and the men akhta minhum, you number who, an khatay, an khatayhi, wala yutaba alayhi. This is very important. This is what our Sheikh 
Imam Abdul Masin al Abad, Muhaddith of Medina, he said, and from the nus, from the advising, because this is all in the tradition of advice, because we mentioned the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu He said, وَمِن نَصْ لِأَهْلُ sunnah." How do you advise us, Ahlul Sunnah? So from the way in which you advise Ahlul Sunnah is regarding their mistakes or regarding a mistake that someone from Ahlul Sunnah makes, is you point out their mistake. So we don't say, no, he makes a mistake, we're just gonna keep silent about it. La, you have to advise your brother. But it's how you go about doing that. So he says, you, uh, you point this out to him. You point out his mistake, but you don't follow it up. Meaning that now that you've got a mistake, you don't go through all of his books, all of his tapes, all of his lectures to try to find more and more until you can compile something to take it to one of the scholars to destroy that brother's honor. This has been happening for years, Abu Bilal. That's why I'm mentioning this now, and it, and it still continues to happen. How many people are just be, beginning to seek knowledge, and they think they know it all, and they're going up on the YouTube, and they're going up on the various forums, and they're looking to destroy du'at, du'at that don't agree with them on one issue, or they don't go to the lectures that they go, or they sit, they praise someone they don't like them to praise, so they try to do everything they can to follow up their mistakes. And I and rest assured that any of us, if the people followed up all our mistakes, we would all be moved to the aim to the people. Because you will not find a person who doesn't have a mistake. And, and mistakes, and, and this goes with even our ulama. People could write books about many mashaykh that you praise to destroy their honor. But that shows that that's not the point of how you deal with Ahl Sunnah. And then the Shaykh said, and do not be away from them. Do not cut yourself off from them for this reason, for this reason of this mistake. And causing people to not benefit from them anymore. People are benefiting from certain du'a to Ahl Sunnah. But then the people are, are destroying their honor so much to where the people say, how can you praise so-and-so? How can you take from so-and-so? Are you advising to take from so-and-so? SubhanAllah, one mistake or one issue that may not even be a mistake because the person doesn't have the knowledge and they don't even know whether it's a mistake or not, but they say, no, he sat with this one. He sat with this one. Oh, we know him. He's from our city. He sits with this one. But you destroy all of the ways he muakaf, that he has uh, uh, agreements with the Sunnah of the Prophet his, his whole foundation and that he's known to the ulama and that he traverses the Miraj of the Salaf. You destroy all of that. You throw all of that away. And you warn the people not to benefit from him. So then who's really destroyed? You're the one destroyed. In the end, even if you destroy the brother's honor, or the sheikh's honor, or the talib al the, the talib al -ilm, his honor, that you're the one who's destroyed. Because in the end, you will be known to your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala as the one who cut off the path of good. So that's why I advise myself and my brother and sister to be cautious about that. And... The Sheikh mentioned many benefits with regards to this, and I just wanted to keep it somewhat precise and advise myself and my brothers and sisters not to indulge deeply into those issues about destroying people. And in fact, it should never be a concern that we should be concerned with destroying people. However, those people who have knowledge and fiqh and hikmah, that they can look into the issues of Ahl bidah to warn us against Ahl bidah and to warn us against the mistakes even of our brothers, but not to necessarily try to destroy your brothers. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept their good and forgive our evil.